pretty good, pretty good honeymoon period. First uh, three weeks have been, um, yeah, really enjoyable and tough work, but um, yeah, settling in really well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think you're sort of kidding yourself these days if you if you don't think pre seasons are going to be pretty tough. But um, no, it's it's yeah, it's been great. Similarities between the pre season that Port does in Melbourne, or a bit different? Oh, definitely um, some similarities, but um, yeah, I guess certainly different as well. There's um, we've got a different schedule here. We get the Thursdays off and train Saturday mornings. That was a bit different and. Um, you know, just some different ideas of, of, you know, what we should be training and how we should be training and, um, yeah, as I said, really enjoying it. it. Seems like there's been a big emphasis on contested work and, you know, uh, not sort of leaving out physical drills and stuff like that. Have you found that while it's happening? Yeah, it's been great. That was, you know, one thing I noticed. First session came in um, with the younger guys and it was just bang straight into it. Um, which, you know, we as players, that's what we love. We love getting into the games and uh, getting the footies out early. So, um, you know, allows us to do a bit less running after training, <laughs> which is uh, which is nice. So, um, but I mean, that's, that's what you expect these days. It's a um, contested game and, um, you know, we're pretty strong at that. Did you ever think six months, even three months ago, you'd be at Port Adelaide, living in Adelaide? <laughs> Yeah, certainly not, um, three, six months ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess once it, it did sort of come into the equation, um, you know, I, I jumped at the opportunity, really. It's, um, it's been amazing coming over here, the lifestyle, the people, um, this club. Um, I think it's just everything that I needed, to be honest. Because did you plan to be, I guess, a Melbourne player for life? Was that your... Um... Uh, I think you, you sort of go along with, with what happens. I certainly... Um, you know, love my time at, at Melbourne, but um, you know, I think a, a change was certainly what I needed. And and now coming here and, and being here for three weeks, it's just it's proven to me that it was you know the best decision I've I've made. And um, you know, I'm I couldn't be more excited for for what's to come. Adelaide itself, it's not somewhere that you've never been before. You've spent some time here over the few years, haven't you? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've been over here a bit for for games and stuff, and then. I've, I've had a mate move over here, um, he was a pilot, so um, he got based out of here a year and a half ago, so we've come over to see him a few times, and um, yeah, I've, I've spent a bit of time here, got a bit, a little bit of family over here as well, so certainly not a stranger, and, um, but yeah, certainly enjoying the, uh, the beach lifestyle down in uh, North Brighton. Jack Tringo coming over as well. Um, seemed to fit into place beautifully. Yeah, oh, it was just incredible. When I, I was actually uh, in Montreal with, with my girlfriend at the time when I got the call from him. He said, you won't believe who I've just spoken to. Kenny Hinckley. And uh, so then he sort of said, oh, nothing's official just yet, you know, and um, so we can't really get too excited. And then as soon as I got off the phone, I messaged Kenny. I said, mate, He's a legend, you, you won't go wrong. And Kenny said, yeah, it's all done. You just keep it under wraps for a little while. So um, it was pretty, yeah, just surreal um, that now we're sort of living together in another state, back in his, his home state. And, um, you know, he's taking care of me, showing me the ropes. So how did that happen with you? Um, well, I'm assuming there's other clubs interested. How were Port the most keen? How did you come to choose them? Yeah, I think it was just... Um, you know, I sort of did all my, my research and spoke to everyone I, I could and, um, you know, it was just the best fit. Um, it's where I think, I, you know, where I thought I was going to enjoy my footy the most, um, where I could get the most out of myself and, um, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with the people that are here and, um, you know, the interactions I had with them before making the, the decision. So. Um, yeah, and, and and as I said, this the three weeks have, have sort of proved to me that it was the right decision. You sort of touched on it there, but in terms of the, uh, without selling your old club up river, but the feeling walking in the doors here compared to Melbourne, can you? What's different? Between <laughs> oh, I think you know you're always going to have that little bit of extra excitement when you're you're coming to a brand new club, aren't you? So you know I was at Melbourne for for nine years and. Um, you know, I just, as I said, I needed that change and something a bit more exciting and, and new, you know. Um, so, yeah, you come in here and, you know, you see guys like Travis Boak and Robbie Gray and Charlie Dixon up forward and you just want to impress them and, and put your best foot forward and, um, you know, earn the respect of the playing group pretty early. So, 
that's what I've been trying to do for for three weeks. How do you think you fit on field, Jack? Oh, I like to think I'd be sort of, you know, that half forward, a um, bit of a connection between back line, midfield, you know, going inside 50. So I think that's probably where my strengths lie, using the footy and um, creating sort of scoring opportunities for us. Do you reckon working with Port's coaches, I mean, I'm not sure how many coaches you would have worked with in Melbourne, but do you think there's a bit of stability and maybe a little bit more development that you've still got left? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think everyone's got improvement in them and... Um, you know, for me, I think that an environment like this will um, will really help. You came back to training, Jack, a week earlier than expected with your first or fourth years. What, what was the thinking there? Oh yeah, I just wanted to get to know the the younger guys, I guess, and that week was a really good opportunity without you know the older boys, as they obviously played finals. So, um, you know, for me, it was sort of we we were going to come back on the twentieth um, regardless, and um, yeah, obviously, trainers and I. Um, took that opportunity to come in and get to know everyone and um, yeah, just get started on, on the right foot. And Adelaide as a city, is it kind of the perfect blend? You're out of that Melbourne bubble, but you're still in a footy mad town? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. I think just being able to you know, get to training. I live in, we're in North Brighton and all the boys say that we're ages away. How can you live out that way? <laughs> And it's you know 24 minutes tops, um, you know, with traffic at 7:30 in the morning, and I'm used to living three kilometres away on Punt Road and taking me 45 minutes. So, um, you know, just the the lifestyle, um, you know, the beaches, I'm just loving, and um, yeah, as you said, that still that footy uh, focus, but um, you know, it's out of that little Melbourne bubble. Did you get around the test? The test I did actually on the Saturday. Um, we weren't fortunate enough to have the old members' tickets, so me and my mates were just out in the hill. But um, yeah, I had a few mates from Melbourne come over. They'd planned it months ago, and a um, bit of fun. Jack, did you see Travis Blake's injury last Friday? We were told that he sort of did it in a training drill, sort of fending off someone. Yeah, I didn't actually see it personally. I think the mids were doing a bit of extra tackling or something. But he just said he the worst thing is he can't play golf for a couple of weeks. So. Um, no, I think he should be should be all right. So has he told you that he'd be right for like full training after Christmas? Or he's... I had I didn't really speak to him. I sent him a message and and uh, yeah, the main thing on his mind was not being able to play golf. But I'd say he'd be fine. I haven't really um, found out exactly what it is. But he was out there today doing a bit, and um, I'd imagine he'd be back in as soon as he possibly can. So you mentioned half forward before. Are you really hoping to settle in one spot because you've been all over the field, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. I think I'd love to, um, you know, to really lock down that that spot up forward. But at the same time, if um, you know, if the team needs me to go up up the ground a bit or play on a wing or you know, play as a tall mid, um, you know, I'm certainly up for for anything um, that we need. But um, yeah, ideally, I'll, I'll kick a lot of goals and put a lot of a lot of ball down Charlie's throat and um, yeah, help in, in that aspect of the game. Yeah, I guess having you know a, a pretty large new group coming in um, has made it a little bit easier. Um, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all coming across from from different clubs, and um, but I think the main thing that that's made it so easy is, is you know the guys, the teammates, the coaches. Um, you know, just made us feel so welcome and. Um, you know, really, really settling in early, and now we can, you know, focus on on the season ahead and really try and gel as a group before uh, before we get into games. Did the way things ended with Melbourne sour your sort of overall feel of your time at that club? No, not at all. No, um, I think it was just a, a good decision for for both parties. Really, um, yeah, speaking with Goody and and um, you know a few other people at the club. You know, it was a mutual sort of agreement, and um, you know, I think it, it ended pretty well. Who's closer to the flag? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know who I think is. Uh, that's why I'm here. So um, that's pretty. It's pretty exciting coming in, and you know, just the, the names that are at this club at the moment. Um, you know, and then you add Rockcliffe and Steve Motlop. Um, you know, it's pretty exciting if we can keep everyone out in the park and. Um, you know, just that even sort of team contribution. You're not going to need one or two players to, 
you know, have 35 and, you know, Charlie to kick five goals a game. We're going to have a really even um, contribution across the board, I think. So, um, you know, everyone play their bid, everyone play the team role and, you know, we should have a really successful year. Is there a bit of pressure that comes with that, like having a team obviously made the finals last year and getting a few experienced recruits in the club? Is there a pressure to really perform the next year or so? Oh, you'd hope so. Yeah, you'd hope there's a bit of pressure. We want to be successful, and that's what this this club is all about: is being a, you know successful out in the field. Um, you know, that's what we expect, and um, there's no reason why we shouldn't be.